Base family and welcome to Everything Base. Wow, you know, the response to my offer of doing a series where we take a real book song every week and I give you guys a, um, like a workout, something that you'll go through every day and work out, the response was great. And uh, I had people Facebooking, messaging me, uh, commenting on the videos, very excited about this um, opportunity. And, and I'm glad because I think it is a great opportunity to focus your practice. If you feel like sometimes you sit down and you just play the same stuff you already know and you don't feel like you're advancing your musicianship, then this is a great opportunity. And I'm gonna try to every one, every once every week, maybe two weeks, I'll offer another um, seven day real book tune based workout. And so today's song is a simple song. As you know, my theory of teaching is if I'm introducing you to a new um, subject, a new, uh, uh, process a new exercise. I start with something that's actually um, maybe more simplistic as a source material so you can get used to the process and then we can actually evolve into songs with more com complexity in the harmony and, and maybe the melody is tricky. Well the melody can be trickier. So in the intro you heard me play uh, the melody to Freddie Freeloader. Great tune from Miles Davis off of the Kind of Blue album. And um, it's all dominant chords, and that's one of the reasons I chose it today, is because your workout's gonna be really a chance to work out and hopefully add something new to dominant your dominant chord um, playing. So um, let's get right to it. So if you are a Patreon subscriber, um, first of all, thank you. Second, uh, just follow the description in the, uh, or sorry, follow the link in the description below. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, just it's $8 a month, but you'll be able to download the workout sheet with the reminders of things I want you to work out. Again, simplistic this time, gonna become more involved. I also have the chart, I wrote the melody, and I did some of the footwork on these early um, studies just uh, to kind of get you going. Uh, so when you go, you'll download this sheet. And this sheet is basically the seven day real book workout for bass, Freddie Freeloader, and it's uh, eight steps actually. Uh, it's funny because seven day workout, but you can mix them up and how you wanna work them out. So the first thing uh, that's important to do, and that it's amazing when I talk to people who are struggling maybe with a cover song or uh, someone sends them an original track and they're struggling with it, uh, coming up baseline, one of the first errors they make in their really in, in a focused study is they don't listen to the source material. So step one is listen to the recording multiple times, not with your bass. Like we're, 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 <laughs> you, we're all wired the same. We're going to jump in. We're going to try to start playing along. We're going to hear something we like. Just um, you allow yourself just the, the moment to focus and not just one time through. Listen to the song several times. Really get its vibe, its essence from at least the original. And um, and that's easy enough. Hey man, you're done with step one. No, nothing more than listening. Uh, if I can take a quick side note, I was struggling with my jazz playing as a student of MI. I came into MI doing a lot of rock, metal, some funk, some blue, a lot of blues. But when it came to jazz, um, I was learning the mechanics. I was learning like uh, some good ideas and, and uh, ways to approach walking a bass line. But my walking sounded clinical, had zero swing, had zero life. And the late, great uh, Jim Lacefield um, loaned me a little paper bag full of cassette tapes. And he just said, listen, these are on loan for the next week. When you go to bed, just pop one in, just listen to one. You know, and back then, you know, cassette recorders, they'd play like one side and then pop off and turn off. And that's mine, how mine did. And so sure enough, I would just put in a cassette and kind of blue, um, the album kind of blue was there. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'd fall asleep right away. Sometimes I'd listen to the whole thing. Um, but I did that and sure enough, I started, my playing became much more authentic and I was very, very uh, impressed with the how much improvement I saw by just listening. Um, so that's step one, listen to the source material, listen to the track, it's available, many streaming services. Um, you know what, I, I really think you should buy it. I think you should buy the album. Um, that's one of the rare jazz albums where I think every song's in the real book, um, at least the, the real books I have. Uh, so, you know, it's just an iconic moment in recorded history. So I would highly recommend that. So now you've done that. You've listened to it. You've got kind of the spirit of the original composition. So number two, learn the melody. Um, now this might be a little surprising for you that I'm asking you to learn the melody because we're approaching this as like how to become better at walking bass lines, better at improv. Melody is a great thing to do for all of that. And let me explain. Um, I remember seeing the great John Clayton playing upright 
And during one of his solos, he wasn't singing. I'm sorry, not it wasn't during solos. I'm sorry. During one of his walking lines, he wasn't. Uh, he was singing not what he was playing. He was singing the melody. You could see him sing the melody as he's walking. No one was playing the melody. He was playing behind solos, but he was doing that to help his phrasing, and that really impressed me. And so, um, and also, every time I ask any kind of player, guitar player, bass player, anyone I admired who who uh, who soloed great, uh, what's well, something I could do to work on my soloing? They would say, "Oh, learn melodies." And as one of them said, a melody is a solo. So uh, that really struck me. So again, today, very, very, very simple melody that you can practice. Um, all right, so when you're learning the melody, I've written it out and it's written this time. I'm not gonna do this for everyone, but I've written it out both in standard notation and tab, and I've done the tonal analysis. Now, what that means is, is if you look on the sheet music, I've written out what each interval is to the chord that, it, that it's supporting. And one thing you notice, these little realizations that, that are important to your improv, as Miles, uh, like the first chord's a B flat, and he, the melody starts on G, and then it goes to the F. Well, in B flat, the F is the perfect fifth. It's a resolving perfect fifth, but he starts on the major six. And that is really cool. Um, over the years of teaching and, and in my early experiences, for some reason, people, and myself included, um, avoid the playing the major six on dominant chords major uh, seven chords major triads things like that and it's got a lot of great tension that that against this chord i love that sound when it goes to the e flat uh i play with his dominant he goes up again to the major six so he's really kind of riding that horse major six resolving the perfect fit major six by doing chord tone analysis like this, how the chord tones relate, now you have power. Now you can take this and do something with it besides just playing the melody to Freddie Freeloader. So um, how? Uh, let's say you're playing on a song and it comes time for you to play a little bit of a bass solo and there's a dominant chord and you love that kind of sound that that melody had. Now you can rip it off. <laughs> Sorry, not rip it off, borrow it. Um, but you don't have to play the same melody. You could, you know... You, know, you can play many things, but now you know, regardless of what the chord, it doesn't have to be a B-flat dominant chord. It can be in any uh, dominant chord, and you just start on the major six, resolve the fifth. It can be a very quick motion against that chord. So you see how doing the analysis empowers you. It gives you the information so that you can use it in your own plane and not just to play this melody. Um, this is a simple melody, and you'll find that the, when you look at uh, my analysis, or do your own, you don't have to um, you know, become a Patreon subscriber and get that. But if you want to see mine or check your work against mine, please do. Um, but that's uh, as we get more involved and we start doing these cooler melodies, there's going to be sections you might go, oh, that was cool. You'll be able to do an analysis, figure out what the, the notes are against the chord being played, and now you can implant, impart that into your plane. And that's just amazing. I love that. So step two, learn the melody. Uh, on this melody, one day you'll have it down. I also encourage you to memorize the melody. That just frees you up. It frees you up to think. Your not, eyes aren't locked on the paper. Uh, and I think it's actually a great practice. Our memory is a muscle. And so by practicing to memorizing things, that's going to help you overall in, in life. Um, all right, so let's move on. Step three, practice the arpeggios for each chord in the song. Play them off of every root on your bass. And this is pretty simple. They're all dominant sevens. So once you kind of figure out that the B flat dominant is here, you know, and kind of go around to all the all the B flats you can find. Uh, then move to the E flat and move to the F. Uh, this is pretty simple. Again, on this particular song, probably one day. You could just focus a day and just improvise around with it. Uh, once you've done that, now... Step four, improvise a walking bass line using just the chord tones. So your bass line would be... I find doing chord tone only walking, it's just great. Uh, first of all, if you're new to walking, it's fewer notes so you have to decide uh, upon what to play. Every note's a chord tone, so every, every note you play has some kind of relationship to the chord, so take some of that stress off you. It really helps you map it, map out your fingerboards. You'll find new patterns. Uh, early on doing this study, I found that all these notes are easily found in this 
root position of the um, B flat dominant chord. So now when I'm walking, I can walk and, and play through that, and that's pretty cool. Um, so again, all dominant chords, this one's going to be easy. So just work on that. Just take a day. Improvise along this. I'll have a little wave file of two minutes of this progression. I'm not going to play a lot of fancy stuff because I want you to hear what your notes are playing, um, how your notes sound against the arpeggio or, or the chord. Um, so improvise with that multiple times. Um, okay, uh, and by the way, if, if uh, you don't uh, have the means to you know become a Patreon subscriber, there are like play along um, songs on YouTube on different streaming services where someone's put backing tracks um, for uh, classic jazz songs, and there's a lot of Freddie Freeloader. So you can also just find them on YouTube, find them on any of your uh, streaming sites, and just play along with it that way. Um, yeah, so that's available. All right, number five, improvise a walking bass line using major pentatonic scale. So now we're adding to it, but we're taking away the dominant seven. So, you know, if we have the B flat dominant seventh arpeggio here, we've got these notes, major pentatonic, there's that major six, but we skip over and we don't include a seven at all. And I think that's a really important thing to do because first of all, Miles's melody has a lot of major sixes on it. So why don't we use this scale and see how we can walk a line. All right, so you can just mess with the major pentatonics um, and, and practice that. Secondly, let's do um, six, uh, step six, we're gonna use the mixolydian mode. And if, if you're jumping in now and you haven't seen all my previous videos, go back and look and you can see on um, learning the modes five, mixolydian, you can, you can hear me talk about that, but I'll give you a quick uh, rundown. Mixolydian mode, of course, is like the major scale, but has a flat seven, and well, that's why it matches up with the dominant seventh arpeggio so well. All right, same thing. Now you're gonna walk a line playing with mixolydian. And just practice, you know, using all those notes. Uh, hear what notes are great to start on, what notes are great to resolve on, and um, and do that. Now, uh, step seven, improvise a walking bass line using Lydian flat seven. Now this is, because this um, song is is got a very simple chord structure, very simple melody, uses only dominant chords, I thought I would add one advanced thing if you're a player that hasn't really done much with Lydian flat seven. Now I, I recorded a video on uh, learning the Lydian flat seven. It's um, I think uh, it'll probably be titled something like Spice Up Your Bass Lines and Melodies for Dominant Seven Chords. Um, Bleeding Flat Seven is a great scale. And what it is, you can watch that video for much more detail, but it's, it's basically, you can look at it two ways. Its name tells you what it is. The Lydian, here's the Lydian mode, but the Lydian mode has a major seven. So you play the Lydian flat the seven. Now, if we compare it to Mixolydian, it's mixolydian, but with a sharp four. And that four is a great bluesy note. So practice, you know, learn it, be able to play it off every root, B flat, E flat, F and A flat, and then um, start just improvising a walking line. Now, uh, step eight is basically do steps four through seven, but instead of thinking about a walking bass line, now start playing melodies and solos. Melodies and solos um, are very similar. I like sometimes when I'm talking to a student who doesn't have a lot of confidence in their soloing, I say melodies, because for some reason that doesn't seem as intimidating, and I don't want you intimidated. A solo can be a melody, and melody is a you know, solo a lot of times. So um, take each one of the steps. Start with just the arpeggios, and play a little bass melody, a little bass solo. Um, one thing I do like, I didn't actually um, put it on this uh, workout, but I'll probably upload it on our channel, is a great practice with your chord tone studying is go to a constant eighth notes where you're playing one and two and three and four and one and two and for every arpeggio or every chord. But uh, just limit your playing to the chord tones and try not to always start on the root. So you might do like... See, I start on the third of the E flat. Back to the B flat. And 
Mm-hmm. I changed the rhythm there at the end. But that constant eighth note, um, not allowing yourself to pause, makes you you really actively think. You start thinking ahead of what's the next chord. You also, if, you, if you're a player who just feels so anchored to the root and you want to maybe start playing with thirds and fifths, starting your phrases with thirds and fifths, this is a great exercise. I wrote out just simply one way to do it. So if you uh, download the chart, you'll see that there's a chart. Um, it has a constant eighth note melody just going up and down and up and down. It's just one way. Believe me, there's you can do so many different ways. And, and in future, I'll actually assign, I'll give you a starting note and a fretboard range and want you to write that out. And then you can download, if you're a Patreon guy, you can um, download uh, my key, if you will, and see how you did. Did you write exactly the same way? Because if I give you the parameters and you're playing on a four string bass or any string bass, but I give you the lowest note and the highest note and I tell you starting note and that you give you these certain rules, you should write the same thing as I do. And it's a great exercise. Some of my favorite teachers in MI would t- have us do that. And it was just brilliant. Okay, so in depth, guys, way beyond some of the uh, early videos, what I'm doing here, I'm really, really pushing you. But taking a week or maybe two weeks to do these things on this chart, and you can measure your improvement. Um, If you feel like it, try this as an experiment to see if this is working for you. And that is listen to the chart, or I'm sorry, listen to the song uh, a couple times, you know, step number one. And then, Look for maybe play along or or download my WAV file and um, just try to improvise. Just try to play. Just don't just with your skill set now. Push play on whatever play along track you're doing, and just try to walk a line or play a melody, and see how well it goes. Then and it might go well, but then go through the steps. Be diligent. Go through the steps, and at the end, record yourself playing over with this, hopefully these new tools and this new understanding and this new empowerment uh, from doing the studies and compare what you did. Um, you should see a big improvement. Um, I've been doing this for years and years and years and years and I have never not seen improvement. Ooh, double negative. Uh, my grammar sucks, but I hopefully you get the point. All right, so here we are. This is the first one. I will offer up another chart that will get progressively harder and more complex. Melodies will be more challenging. Chords will have a lot more variety, a much more intensity. They'll actually probably become you know quite outside at times because I want you to everyone to be able to work up uh, whatever area they're working on. So a simple one today, but I think it's an important one, and I hope you guys dig it. Let me know, uh, my bass brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, how did this go? Could it have been better? Could I add an element to this? Is there a resource I could make available to you uh, through, via Patreon that would help you in these studies? Whatever it is, let me know. And if I can do it, I will do it. Because I want these to be powerful. I want you guys to learn from these. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, please like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell icon. All those things help grow this channel and allows me to do more things. Um, so I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Thank you.